Yeah! Okay, so here we are. <laughs> Good afternoon. Jeez! Okay, well, here we are. Let me go ahead and, uh... Shout this! Oh, heck yeah. We have one very special man with us today, as a guest host, who I understand knows our submitor. Submitor? Sub submitter? Uh, but I'm not sure how well he knows your music, though, Jeff, so we'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens there. Um, my side chain is probably pumping right now, eh? One second, let's pull this back a bit. It's a little more reasonable, how about that? Alright. Well, welcome to Real Talk. Um, we got guest host John Robert Matz with us. I'm pretty stoked about that. It's been a while since I saw that guy in person. It's been too long. It's like Game Sound Con last year? Two years ago? Jeez. It's been a while. Let's do, uh, this. Alright, boom! Boom! I'm post right here, too. Do one more for good, for good, good, uh, good measure. Um... We- oh! <laughs> I bought this! I must not be logged in right now. Interesting. Alright, well. Rip. Uh... John Robert Matz has worked on some freaking stuff, man. He has been around the block. We uh, we refer to him as a veteran game composer in our tweet, and I think it's pretty pretty deserved, honestly. Uh, he's been on For the King, Fossil Echo, Gods of the North Live. What this is? What is this? Rodina. He's doing Esper now as well. Is that what it's called? Esper? Isn't that a thing you're doing, man? I saw on your your Twitter. Wasn't that a thing? Is your Twitter here? I did hear. I had it. Where'd it go? There we go. That's the one. Launching Esper. I was correct. Nailed it. Uh. This guy. So Fossil Echo. Holy crap. There's a scene of Fossil Echo. Actually, you know what I have? I bet I still have this. Give me a second. Ugh, if I, I didn't think to grab this before the stream, man. I bet you know what it is, too, don't you? Do you know what I'm trying to find right now, Robert? I almost called you Robert. John? Do you know what I'm gonna try, try and find here? Come on. Where is this? Talk resources? I don't know what this thing is, man. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea where I would have left this. So basically, John Robert Metz helped me out with a talk I delivered some time ago. And, uh... There's one scene in Fossil Echo... I wonder if I can find the video of it. If there's like a gameplay shot of that. Um, in Fossil Echo, there's a ladder sequence during which the player can either choose to climb or not. And it climbs for like minutes. You can see how long it is in the chat if you want there, John. I can't remember how long the, the climb is, but it is. It's a long climb. And it's only music. And the thing is, the music progresses based on uh on like how high you are. And he had to make this track that was just structured in a way that would allow you to like allow the music to either either progress or not because the character either says I'm gonna climb or not. That's all the player can do, right? So yeah, I just I saw a flow chart for it and it's ridiculous. Just having it work and how nuts it was. And basically so he he wrote all the music and the various chunks and then that music actually informed what the ladder climb looked like visually. Super super cool. Um so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna try and find this really fast here. The ladder. Let's play Fossil Echo. I don't want to. <laughs> Too hard to find right now. Um, I'm gonna get John on the, on the line actually while I uh, while I'm talking about this. Um, incoming. Here we go. And call, please. There it is. Hello, hello. Hey, man. 
How are you? I'm I'm so good. Robbie. Robbie the gay. The gay? Is it the gay or the gay? In fact, here. Man, I'd be so good. I'm gonna kill my my side chain for a second here, so I stop stomping all of your your beautiful voice. Uh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thanks a lot, man. Yeah. Um, those, by the way, those in the chat uh, might know that last week I promised you Adam Gubman this week. He unfortunately had to reschedule, so uh, John was very gracious in in clearing his evening schedule to help us out and fill in for uh, for Adam. So, um, and certainly. I'm just as, if not more, happy to have John um, rather than Adam right now. So it's we're, we're in very good hands as far as guest hosts are concerned. Um, so thank you very much, man, for making the time. Seriously, I know I said to you in person already, or personally already, but um, it's very helpful. Oh, it's a pleasure. Uh, pleasure to be uh, on the show. This is a super cool program, and I'm glad to kind of uh, get to give back a little bit and uh, help out with uh, with talking about music and reels and all sorts of fun stuff so you got some game brass hype from luke in the chat right now <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, yeah indeed here's um here's john here as you may have seen on his twitter twitter profile <laughs> should give him a follow on twitter he's a he's a good guy to know about um i didn't know you did voice acting too man. i was on your page yep i'm on your page right now uh i was listening through it's actually pretty good <laughs> I shouldn't sound surprised, you know, but um, yeah, it's killer. Uh, okay, yo. So one thing that we love to to ask guest hosts who come on is how you got your start in games, because that's kind of the whole point of this this uh, this stream, right? And you know, we just ha- we have um, various people submitting their stuff and saying, "Hey, I want to get more work or get a job or get some more traction going freelance wise or whatever." And um, it's really important to remember that like everyone started somewhere. You know, I, I often bring up this like this find the differences flash game called Miki and Mavery, and that's and, and it that's the first game I ever worked on. There was like ten sounds and they all suck. <laughs> They're not good. <laughs> but it's the first thing I like I shipped, quote unquote. And I recall like going home that day just being just you know over the moon. I was so happy, even though it was just this, this dinky little silly game. Um I'm sure you can probably find it somewhere if you search those words too. But uh, yeah, so I'm really curious. I don't think I even know this, but what your what your first um, like game project would have been and how you got that? Yeah, totally. Uh, the first uh, the first game I ever worked on was a a weird game that has somehow managed to remain like a strange cult classic. Uh, it's called Artemis: The Spaceship Bridge Simulator. Um, it is basically a uh, a five player or a five plus player um, Star Trek bridge sim, like multiplayer game that takes five computers to run. And uh, it's like a networked everyone in the same room. Every computer is a different bridge station, bridge terminal. So like tactical and helm and uh, communications and science and engineering and one captain who shouts at everyone. Uh, and it is very much like trying to replicate that Star Trek experience. Uh, and it's a super weird, super crazy game uh, that has, like, I go to conventions, I go to, like, Comic-Cons, and, like, I was at MAGFest, and they have a whole room that's just people playing this game. Mm-hmm. It's insane. Uh, and it's made by one guy named Tom Robertson who lives in, like, who lives in Ohio. And, uh, and like, this is, like, something that he'd been, like, working on for a while. Uh, and uh, and I saw it. Um I saw it actually on a, in an article in Rock Paper Shotgun, uh, and I looked at this and said, "This looks very neat." Mm-hmm. And at the time, I had been toying with the idea. Well, I, I'd written music for films, and I'd written music for uh, for like concert music and stuff like that. That's actually what like Gods of the North is uh, is a more recent concert work of mine. Right, right. Um, but um, uh, but like I'd not done any music for games, and I played games my entire life. Uh, and I'd always wanted to kind of try something like that. And I've been actively looking for, uh, for work along those lines. And so this thing came up and the developer was doing, uh, because it's such a weird game, uh, because it takes these, it has these weird hardware requirements and also friend requirements. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's very strange and difficult to kind of show off. He'd started a campaign where he had like a, a demo that was good for like three bridge stations uh, is a little bit more reduced, had like one scenario and you could download the demo for free and you could play it and film your friends, uh, and yourself playing the game, post it to YouTube 
and shoot him a link and he would give you a free copy of the game. <laughs> nice. And okay. so I watched all these people play in these things and like it was it, it, some of them like really creative, like people put costumes on and uh, like just hammed it up. Uh, and some of them were just like, this is us in our living room on couches, playing on laptops, very land party, uh, fun stuff. And but some of the more creative ones like went pretty over the top and like put in like scores from, you know, James Horner, Star Trek scores or, uh, you know, or Star Wars or or just like uh, EDM music the entire time or yeah, something right, like yeah. that, just like dubbing in extra music. And I'm like, you know, this game, like I realized like playing the demo, this game is this game is no music in it. Mm-hmm. This game is no music in it at all. And it's super cool. Uh, and so I had this terrible idea. Uh, where what if I just filmed a video of me and my cousins playing this game uh, in my basement uh, and then took some music that I'd already written for like a sci-fi short Mm -hmm. and just use that for it. Easy peasy. Right. Except I very quickly realized that we shot like 10 minutes of like to make the story of this thing function uh, of this adventure function, I had like 10 minutes of video or so and about a minute and a half of good music that fit it. <laughs> okay, and yes. so I quickly just found myself writing 10 minutes of music for this thing. Uh, and so I wrote 10 minutes of music uh, for this stupid video and then I wound up sending it, you know, edited the whole thing. Again, everything's taking way longer than I expected is, it is this, to. Is this like uh, playable felt, somewhere? Like is the video online somewhere? The, oh God, yes, unfortunately it is. You can, <laughs> You can find it. It's like on it's on YouTube. It's like an an Artemis evening, I think is what it's called. If you search for that, you'll probably unfortunately find it. Uh, But so I made this thing and I scored it. uh, And it's like not like it's surprisingly not awful. It's not mixed well. Nothing sounds great. Nothing looks great. It's all cell phone cameras from like 2000, like ten or, or something like that or you know whatever that that we're using so it looks just beautiful oh, yeah. uh but we did this thing and i wrote back I, I packaged it up uploaded it to youtube and wrote to the developer and said hey um here's uh, my submission for this thing uh i love a copy of the game also by the way if you like the music i couldn't help but notice you didn't have oh no you found it uh, <laughs> uh i couldn't uh i couldn't help but notice you didn't have any music in your game you know, yeah, yeah, uh, nice. you uh, maybe um, I, all the music I wrote, uh, all, all the music you're hearing here is stuff I wrote. Uh, any chance uh, you might be interested in working together on this? And he liked it apparently well enough that uh, he brought me on. And so I wound up scoring that game. That was the first one I've ever done. I, I went back uh, a year or two later and did a huge uh, improvement. But, uh, you know, uh, pass made it sound better, et cetera. But but like uh, the, the basic stuff. <laughs> It's just, it's just my basement. It's terrible. Uh, we all look great. Uh, boy. Um, yeah, nice. It's almost 10 years old. It's terrifying. Thank you for sharing um, this. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, but so it's just, uh, it is just, uh, it, w- it was a weird experience. It was, it was like, let's take a gamble. Let's do probably like a week worth of work with no guarantee that there's any hope whatsoever on this thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, take an absurd gamble and it paid off. Uh, Mm -hmm. And weirdly enough, like, you know, that, that wound up being like my first foray into scoring for games. And like, I designed a whole semi-functional interactive music system and told him how it should work. Mm -hmm. Uh, And we got it to the point where it pretty much worked the way we wanted it to. It's a little, a little inelegant, but it does do its job. And like, this game is like been played by like, uh, George R. R. Martin and Will Wheaton and stuff like that at like crazy <laughs> sure. conventions and it's just insane. It's just like ah, uh, what a weird, uh, ridiculous thing to have done. And that was the first game, game I ever did. This is, what a crazy game, so. man! Yeah, I'm playing it here. I'm not, I'm not sure if you have the stream up right now, but I'm playing a little bit on the, on the, on the, um, on the broadcast here, and it's it's wonderful. <laughs> it's, <laughs> So it's bad. really good. I put like titles in yeah. and everything to like explain it, make it super. It's the worst. It's I mean, so it, good. it, it, it so makes bad. sense that it like resonated so hard with them, though, because I mean, a, a big part of this stream, you know, we have the, the kind of four categories to talk about, which we'll get into shortly. And one of them being distinction. Like, are you standing out? Like, who else did this? You know, <laughs> like, who else yeah. made this video? And <laughs> who else made a video of them and their friends, like, playing the game and then scored the video with custom music for the game like that's insane i I know i know (laughs) i know 
Uh, so that was that was the first game I did, and the second one was uh, was effective. The second real one was uh, was a game called Gunpoint, which was like an open call for for music. And oh yeah, my uh, I wound up being uh, in the end they uh, the developer uh, chose uh, me, uh, my good friend Ryan Ike, and another good friend uh, Francisco Cerda. Uh, and like the music that I did, I wrote a little bit more music than actually made it into the game. But the music that got in was like um, the audition music that I wrote. Oh, yeah. Sure. Uh, so like just just the weirdest things. Like, that's the thing that gets in. That's the title music for the game is the stuff I did just on a, like a, a five. Like took me like an hour. Uh, like I have an idea. Oh, yeah, yeah, man, sure. I got to audition for this. Just knock it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, run downstairs and write this music, and there you go, done. Yeah, Gunpoint's um, a huge game. Like a lot, a lot of a lot of yeah. people played Gunpoint a lot. Yeah. So good on you, man. So, that's a, no, that's definitely a good no, breakaway. No, I, I want to say, like, no, people have either heard of Artemis and freak out when they hear that you worked on it, or they've never heard of it whatsoever, and they're like, uh, okay, cool. Uh, but a lot of people have heard of Gunpoint. So yeah, it's definitely um, we, we have that to a certain games worked on. It. Like if people ask, like, oh, what have you worked on? We'll, like name the usual suspects. Like oh, Dark Darkest Dungeon and stuff. And people like some people don't just for whatever reason, like just don't know the games that we that we think they probably know because they're the more more popular ones. And then we'll mention like yeah. something we did, or someone will be like, "Yo, you were like rockets, rockets, rockets." We're like, "Yes, like why do you know that?" <laughs> like very, it's like exactly. a little lesser known title, right? It's like an indie darling little game, but it's like not. It didn't blow up, you know. It just uh, it was a fun game to work on. Um, that's, that's cool, awesome. man. Definitely, like the cult classics or or like the cult um. Uh, following kind of games are the ones that I, I feel like spark the best conversations. Honestly, if people are really, like, like if they know totally. that stuff m- better than a your more popular stuff. Um, awesome! Thank you for sharing that. Oh man! Welcome. So yeah, I mean, I, I can't I can't speak about like the distinction thing enough. I I know that as a developer, like if people send in stuff like that to you, even if that's a fan, they're not looking for your you know not looking to be hired. But if someone makes like a a fan video that's something like I don't know, like like an acted out like fanfic of some game characters you had, or and it's just like some kids with their their mom's camcorder just like making this stupid short film about like Celeste or something, I would absolutely watch that through. Of course I would, right? It's just uh, yeah, you just know how much work these these people put into into those little like little passion projects for fun. It's like, Oh, why not? I had some time. Let's do this thing. It's in my head. And then it's just, yeah, it's hilarious. So, um, good on you, man. <laughs> I'm sure that went well oh, and you got hired. Thanks. So yeah, it makes sense. Uh, anyways, thing, but... um, well, thanks everyone for coming in today, by the way. Uh, I've been seeing various people pop in Alex Barnhart. Um, yo, Alex, when are we, were you like the very first person on real talk? Or was that Barney Orem or somebody else? You were like in the first five, I think. You were very, very early. Um, but geez, going back a long way. Uh, also, Paul Beckler. Yo, what's up, pal? Sean. Robbie said before, Max. Uh, yes, hello, everyone. For anyone, anyone just joining us, this is uh, John Robert Matz, um, who's helping us out today with a, a few a few little nuggets of wisdom, I suspect. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> got those those nuggets primed man <laughs> it's like in the chamber let's go so this is real talk we're having a look at um some work from jeff mcmillan who i believe is in the chat as well i saw his green name there somewhere uh jeff has been on the show a couple times before and he's back a third time good dude seen him in person a few times here and there and uh, actually just saw him at pack south just recently so thanks for dropping by the booth dude uh and i understand he had a talk there too so he's definitely been pretty active in the industry and i feel i feel like i'm seeing your name around more often jeff so i I feel like like you're getting some of that traction looking for so i'm looking forward to seeing this stuff honestly um i mean like being at pack south and doing a talk there to be on a panel is pretty killer so good on you uh i know that you've done some some panel stuff too right sean here and there yeah yeah sure uh no i've i've uh i've spoken at game sound con a couple times uh a few paxes uh, a few other little things. Uh, yeah, someone mentioned guest Magfest. Lecturing. Was that what someone said? Magfest. Yeah, mentioned? yeah. We had a Magfest uh, panel on uh, basically like how to make a living in game audio, uh, in, in video game music and game audio. Uh, this last PAX and uh, coming up at GDC, I'm on three talks, which is uh, a daunting and exciting experience. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, one is uh, one is about basically uh, is is a wonderful panel uh about um it's called 
what is it called? Uh, it, it's basically it's called uh, relative perfection, uh, and it's it's basically about how in, how learning how to deal with uh, your inner um, your inner perfectionist, like when to pay attention to it and oh, how yeah. to tamp it down and get past it. And it's uh, it's going to yep. be really great. It's uh, it's uh, Penko Kuneva, uh, Austin Wintry, uh, Neil Cree, and Guy Whitmore. Uh, all fantastic composers, uh, and we're all going to talk about this stuff. You're, you're in good uh, so company, So that should be man. a lot of fun. Yeah, you're definitely in good com- yeah. company with that crew. Um, you know, I just saw Alex replied in the chat. He said, first person ever on the first show, lol. First of the first. Wow, Alex. Fantastic. That, not many people can claim that. In fact, only you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Forever, okay. that title will be held by Alex. So this is Real Talk. We're looking at Jeff McMillan's stuff. Um, we're usually a kind of game sound design focused stream. We're looking at sound designer stuff, but we've been kind of opening up. Now we have guest hosts on, on the stream occasionally, um, more often, hopefully. We're looking at, uh, I mean, of course, John is a, a composer first and foremost, so I feel a bit more comfortable bringing a composer, or, who also seems to be a composer first and foremost, on the show for some feedback. Um, it's not like my absolute focus, so I don't feel... Uh, absolutely like comfortable being like here's how you need to do it or here's like my thoughts on your music whereas I feel like uh, I, I feel a bit better with John kind of being here to to back me up or for me to back him up honestly so we're looking at a few things on this stream we're looking at presentation we're looking at material selection content quality and distinction through the next hour or so and presentation is the site itself overall all the info on it um, like your bio and the f- like your navigation the flow around the site making sure the most important stuff is right in your face uh, just general taste, all that kind of stuff, right? Making sure links go where they're supposed to. And the reels themselves, looking at uh, that presentation. So like the flow of the reel. And if you're like kind of telling a story with it, if it's too long or too short, if all the info that needs to be there is there, if there's too much info, um, kind of bookending it back and or, you know, front and back, all these uh, little little things here and there. Twisted magic. What's up, pal? It's been a long time. Uh, material selection. We're looking at what is in the reels in your portfolio. And what that might suggest about your past work history, your current skill sets, and perhaps most importantly, your uh, your future ambitions and what kind of work you want to be doing. And hopefully that's all conveyed clearly. It's all trying to, trying to communicate that, right? Content quality. Uh, it's where hopefully John will weigh in hard. We're looking at the stuff in the reel, the actual content in there, the sound design work, the music work, um, and saying, is it good and hopefully it is <laughs> ideally we're all putting our best foot forward right so hopefully it's uh it's going to resonate with whoever it lands and distinction are you standing out uh oh so um yeah hi hey bjorn when is trash bjorn jacobson of cd project uh for at least another month <laughs> i understand that's what was trash trash in the chat there um yeah so want to get started here john Ah uh, yeah, let's uh, let's uh, do this. Okay, shall I'll we? pop back over here. There we go. So we're on Jeff Missouri Land. Jeff McMillan's page has zoomed in also. So we have demo reels. Excuse me. We have demo reels. Yeah. We got inspiring music and engaging audio content for inquiring minds. All right. Very classy. We got demo reels up top. Music composition one fifty two. It's a good length for music. Sound design, 53. It's pretty good length for me. Sound design also. And implementation, a nice uh, quick 36. I'm curious about that one. We'll see how it goes. And down the left, we got demo reels, ship titles, podcast contributions, and speaker events. Uh, Discography, biography, and some various social media things. And these are all going where they want to go, hopefully. Medium, Vimeo. Vimeo also? Is that where you're posting your stuff? I guess so, right? Yeah, seems like it. Um, Also, YouTube, SoundCloud and email uh do you post on medium often man it's kind of like a blog thing isn't it you can post articles and such um july 2016 i should have guessed the date first um yeah john we often have if if we see like a blog as a link on a page we often like guess when the last post was before clicking when the last post was (laughs) oh man oh man oh man if you go to mine i feel it's like months between the last one and now but uh Oh, that gets you. Oh, yeah. Of course, yeah. I mean, we have the same problem. We'll we'll have an idea that seems like a great idea for a while, and um, uh, we had like, you know, a, we were posting posting Instagram videos for a while, and just couldn't, you know, we just get busy, and you can't keep up with it, and it's like, well, yeah. 
And once you stop doing it it's once, like, it gets much easier to never do it again. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you want to do you want to write a cool post? Do you want to write a cool blog? Or do you want to get the work done that you're being paid to do? Yes. So that the client is happy and the art gets made. Exactly. That's like it's ah, ah I want to yeah. make the world better by writing this blog, but also I yeah, could so can't, just uh, actually do the work and go to sleep instead. Yeah, I can't really fault people for having older blog posts, but just yeah, bear in mind if you have things like Medium linked. And I click that, and I see the last thing was from 2016. Um, and this is, can I click this? Thanks. Um, five minute read. Yeah, cool. So here is a thing. Music to your ears, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's the just the one. Th- is it one thing only? Also. So it's just. I think it is only the one. It's just the one thing. So at that point, it gets into kind of. Uh, it gets into it gets into like why territory it's a bit dangerous like, i get it because you have like speaker events and podcast stuff you're showing you're active and doing doing stuff but if you're on if you're posting this here and you only have one thing then it's kind of like is it really benefiting yeah um i feel like if you if you'd done it from the if you'd um if you had done it and like wrote one and then you linked it to your website and then you just never did another one maybe you take it down after a while but like it's forgivable if it was from yesterday but when it's real old, it starts to look a little bit weird. Yeah, and, uh, and the thing a, is, if your if your if your real stuff is more recent, if the music you're working on is more recent, then it's kind of like a, okay, whatever makes sense. But then it's just like a, okay, whatever, and you're not really yeah adding things to you know your your higher ability and such. But anyways, uh, are we s- analyzing like site layout? As everything, well? everything, dude. Yeah, everything. We're kind of so, yeah. So one thing I didn't mention for everyone walking in. If it's your first time here, maybe for John also, I don't know, you haven't watched a ton of, ton of Real Talk. Basically, we're looking at this whole, this whole thing as if we are, um, like, potential hirers. We're kind of playing that role with, like, you know, in recruitment. If we're a indie dev or if we're at a studio like ours, like Power Up, like a Soundhouse or, like, Hexany or HyperDuck or whatever. Um, or if we're a big studio like Blizzard or Bethesda or something like that. Or midsize or whatever. Just if you're in recruitment and looking for, looking for work... We're going to assume that we've never seen Jeff stuff before. We don't know Jeff. I mean, both John and I do know Jeff, but we'll assume we don't know Jeff. And we'll try to just give some feedback, um, just kind of brutally honest, to be like, well, I don't know who you are, and uh, your site needs to make me want to know more. That's basically what it comes down to. Uh, yeah, so site layout, everything's important to you, so go for it. Okay. Um, so this is maybe a personal taste sort of thing. And I'm maybe I am, maybe I'm in the wrong and this is not how you had given the advice before. I like having the demo reels like very easily accessible. But my first thought when I got to this page was that I had somehow been linked to an inner page and that there must be a front page somewhere, uh, that I got just linked directly to the demo reels page. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that like, there should be a front page to this in some way, like, a, like a, a logo, a splash screen in the center, and then like, oh, there's the stuff. Yeah, but it's it's definitely a mix. I think that like this is kind of a bit. Uh, it's it's a balance, right? So I, I, I mean, of course, I'll, I'll I'll say again, we are not the gospel, but as far as like seeking advice, we're happy to give our own perspective, right? Um, as far as demo reels go, like Taco Bowl in the chat just said, you have limited time with the recruiter, don't waste it. So to that end, having demo reels like right in your face is a, is a good idea, I think. But yeah, I, maybe it is perfectly I, fine. I do think that that you're also correct, John, and that like it seems a bit like we're already in like a sub page. Like oftentimes, what what people will do is they'll have like the front page is like their name at the top and like the gist. So that's kind of what he has here: the whole inspiring music and engaging audio for inquiring minds. Um, but it's also kind of more title pagey and branded and such. But also, mm-hmm. ha- then you have like the big reel right in the middle. So I mean, a uh, good example. I was just on um, Damien Shepard's page today, actually for a different reason. But uh, like right here, we have Damien Shepard, I Game Audio. It's like pff, here's this big big name. This page, if you're watching the stream right now, like this page serves that purpose. It's like oh, I'm, I'm on yeah. Damien Shepard's page. If I go here, and then you hit that play button right in the center. Yeah, like Jeff. One thing I noticed is your name is nowhere, dude. Like not even in, in like JM. J M sorry oh, J right. McMillan music, like the word Jeff is only in this testimonial and that's it. I think you should probably trumpet your name a bit more because it's really important that people people get that impression, right? Um, As someone know. who's been building a lot of like web design stuff recently and like visual stuff for various projects, I would I would love to just have like 
a big logo with your name right in the center and push demo reels down just a bit so you can see it below your name and you see your name and then you scroll down and hit the thing and it's right there if you don't want to get super fancy like like damien's site dude his, his like, um, thumbnails are animating too those previews it's it's they disgusting didn't, they didn't used it's to do that too good <laughs> that's new <laughs> Man, it's, it's and you know what? Damien's getting hired. Oh, there he is. <laughs> it's a me in the chat. There's Damien right now. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, here you go. You have his name. You have the logo, but it's also the real. Like he kind of served both both purposes there. So I feel like landing on Damien's page, it lands a lot stronger than Jeff's. I think it's pretty pretty fair to say that. Uh, I mean, the, the the white background, like the black text. It is like, is this clean? Certainly, I'll get 100% view so you can see what it looks like full full size. Um, this is kind of the layout totally. So this is like a lot of white space over here. Um, and yes, this is not a web design stream, but it's certainly, you know, we should probably give our opinions at least. Uh, yeah, Damien, looking good, man. You're so good at your job. Let's go to the biography, man. Biography. Here he is. Down there at the bottom below discography. Oh, that salt hey, and pepper in that beard. It's his face. Oh, and there Fantastic. it is. Uh, okay. Hi, everyone. Come see me get my work reviewed. Hashtag game audio, hashtag VGM, hashtag sound design. There it is. Two hours ago. Uh, great. Very nice. Oh, I love that. Nice little embedded tweet feed. That's good. Hey, here's a question. So I usually read this out. You're the voice actor. Do you want to read this? <laughs> um, no the pressure. mission statement you mean? Yeah, just the from the top. Mission statements. I firmly believe that you don't have to have a title by your name to be a leader. I also firmly believe that I am here to use my God-given talents in music composition and audio production to provide the highest quality of work possible and to give credit where it is due. I cannot accomplish any of this without his guidance and his direction. Inspiring music and engaging audio content for inquiring minds. Very good. Mm -hmm. sure. All right. And uh, carrying on, inspired by my high school head band director's love for music, I fell in love with music and never looked back. That love for music started a musical journey that has taken me from my humble beginnings in Mansfield, Texas, and equipped me for this field, imbued me with many experiences, and has resulted in multiple projects during my time here in Austin, Texas. The central focus of this journey has been my love for music, and that love fuels my ability to provide inspiring music and engaging content for environment. There it is again, that, that same tagline. Uh... If you like what you see, let's talk more about how I can help you. What's this link go to? It's an email link. Let's collaborate. Uh, or say oh, Jeff, hello. <laughs> this is a bit weird, Jeff. <laughs> it's like two separate. <laughs> they're, they're both email links, but it's like. It's, it's kind of cute. It's kind of cute. I kind of like it. It's, it's kind of dumb, but I also like it. Yeah, it's a little weird, but it's, you know, I'll, I'll let it slide. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. Let's, let's collaborate. Or it's like, oh, you know what? It's fine. We don't. It's okay. It's just, it's, uh, just say hi. All right, so in the VR panel, here he is. We got um, sound design for game development panel. We got Blue Point Games and Austin Educational something. Um, and these again. Great. So we have these down here, and they're also over here, dude. Just I'm a big fan of of um, keeping your like redundancy in check and just keeping things trimmed down to you know trim the fat, keep it what's what's needed, nothing else. Yeah, you can um, probably just scrap them off the bottom in every every one of these and just have them on the left. Yeah. You know, they're on the left on the first page. They're on the left on every page. Yeah, just leave it there. So, it's fine. And like, yeah, well, it's fine. This is part of the widget. That's fine. Uh, okay, yeah, so cool. All right. Um, Very shiny. That's kind of – I mean, as far as bios go, it definitely does say about you, and it's like a decent length, so good stuff. Um discography whoa years popped open there oh boy uh early down wow. 2012 Duh, do you do you care about the year john i don't i actually i actually never i ne okay so secrets i don't put the year in anything because like it's like i in fact i kind of organize like on my page if i like go to like about and like about me and then it has like my credits on the right side. I don't have like discography listed because that's kind of, I don't know, sort of superfluous. I'm like, what have I worked on? Like that stuff is actually secretly slightly organized by what I think is going to be the most impressive. Yeah, of course. Like what people are going to know the most, put them near the top. And so if I wanted to be like, Oh, uh, I want, d did you work on gunpoint? I don't want to like scroll back to 2012 or 2013 to like find that and separate it. So on the other hand, I, I see what you've done here. 
the way he's formatted this is like you click on the year and it's like a whole breakdown of everything, like a bunch of like little tracks for different projects. So you have like all this stuff laid out, which is kind of cool. I don't know if it's possible to do something like obviously this is arranged in a, a chronological order, but I don't know if it would be possible to do something where if it was just like discography and then you popped open that page and you had like, I don't know, like links and it would scroll you to that point in the timeline, mm. you know, so it was just all in one long page. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, um, it's an interesting way of doing it. Um, like it's an interesting way of doing it. I'm not sure if it's very well, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's really useful. Yeah, I agree. Know, I mean, like, what's the most I'm, I'm definitely a big recent. fan of just like shoving what is the most important thing in their face. And the most important thing is the thing that's most impressive. It makes you seem most serious. Also, this is annoying me. This C isn't the Morse code letter for like the dots and dashes for C. Like R is right there. It's Where? It's, it's R. So I'm on the, I went 2018, then clicked oh, Morse, code, Morse code. Then on this page, oh. and this is not C. It's R. But gotcha, I'll I'll gotcha. let it slide. Who who did this this title image for free at a game jam? <laughs> I should not be complaining about. <laughs> uh, cool. So game jam stuff is awesome, man. Good on you for being a global game jam. Uh, I didn't do the R for that. I promise, <laughs> Jeff. Okay, it's fine. Um, just jokes. So. Cool game jam stuff. I mean, so what this does, what this does, Jeff, is uh, one thing that Morse Road. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Acromat? I can just see you. Uh, it's uh, it's a really good microphone. It's a really good microphone. It's a Morse Road. Yeah, exactly. Um, Sorry. So, so <laughs> what, Bjorn, what? So, I, I, just, I knew it wasn't C. Calm down. So... One thing we often talk about on Real Talk is like navigation. Uh, I can't. You're doing a lot of it right. Like this page being, um, the main page is like boom, land here, and you're you're for the most part controlling navigation. I think because someone lands near your page, and you should generally have some some like general prediction of what that person is gonna do when they land on your page, and your page is working because they'll probably click one of these reels and they'll click the one that's most relevant to their interests. If they're hiring a sound designer, they'll, they'll click this one. Hiring a composer, they'll click this one, right? Um, that's all good. So if we apply that same concept, that same principle to this discogra discography button, um, the moment someone clicks this, you have no idea what they're gonna do. And like I could click 2012, I could click any of these, right? 2018 is the most obvious, I, I guess. But I mean, I click 2018, that's it. And it's like Morse code, and there's one thing here. It's like, all right, um, this is not a lot of info, so it's it's kind of curious why you need like the drop down. But I'll click through out of curiosity. Uh, Crimson Room, Weather Together, Wave Beam. I guess it shows you've been doing stuff, but I, I mean, think, it just... I think just put it all on one page with like a banner that's like like as you're going through time, 2018, 2017, 2016, and just like each one of these in one long thing. And if it's a really long page, it's a really long page, but if you want to be completionist yeah, like, about it. I mean, it's it's interesting. It's really up to you, man. I just don't think this is helping you get hired. Like the, it's, so for example, excuse me, I feel like I would love to see, like for selfish, um, narcissist reasons, reasons I, I would like to see a page of like all my work by year. That'd be interesting to me. Like what have I done for the last, you know, nine years? But uh <laughs> It just, yeah, it's kind of, if I'm looking to get hired, what I did in 20, like in like 09, isn't really relevant to these days, you know? So it's kind of, yeah. it's up to you, man. I know you have the demo demo reels up front, and that's going to say what, you've, what you, you're doing now, like what, how, what you have to offer right now. Uh, let's look at shipped titles also. That's kind of more relevant than discography as far as hiring goes. So we got Mighty Mountain, released September 14th, 2018. Developer and publisher, 30, 30 Vision. Um, okay. And then... It, it might... See, at the bottom of this... Oh, negative with, one. Oh, okay. with Orizom Trails, you've got bits of, like, examples from them. I would love to see bits of examples from these other ones. You know, like, oh, ship from, titles. From like, ship what, titles. Is, what does Mighty Mountain sound like? I'd yeah. love to, like, click a button and, like, turn it into a YouTube video or a, or something like that and see what it looks like. Yeah, there's, like, what a... It sounds like. There's the iTunes app link here, and there's the 
3030 vision for the credits, I guess? What's this page? Oh, it's the press. It's the press um, press kit. Okay, well, all right. Uh, yeah, I mean, just also, um, you can probably kill off stuff like released. If you have this date, I assume it shipped. It, we're on the ship titles page, so you can just kill off this stuff. Um, you can put this, like, through the division in this parentheses by Mighty Mountain. Um, just, again, just kill off text where you can, make it easier to look at. Uh, Negative World was in Pax Rising. Good on you, man. That's definitely a good one to have. It's kind of a cool little game where you, you like, platform, and your platforming is, like, math-based. So, like, some platforms will have a number on it, and it'll, it'll be, like, less than two, and you'll need to have, like, a jump, like, a number of jumps less than two to land on that platform. Um, cool. Yeah, it's a cool little game. Uh, Baby Hands. Great. Desert Bus VR. That's a good title to be on. Nice one. Um, Tank Meld. Orism Trails. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, let's go watch your freaking reels, shall we? Yeah, let's do this. Back to demo reels. And I, I, don't, uh, I don't know if you'll hear this. You shouldn't, John, but I'll, I'll mute you anyways just in case. <laughs> I don't Sounds tr- good. Uh, I don't trust Skype, so... Just- all right, uh, let's uh, let's do this. Which one are we gonna do first? Uh, let's do music. We'll go left to right. Okay, All right, I'll, let's I'll make do this. this. Full All right, so we, we click. Do we click it together? Is that how it works? Yeah, sure. And I'll meet you afterwards. Okay. So three, three, two, three two, one, two. and. Uh, my bad. It's really quiet. It's the mixer. Here we go. Hey, John. Hey. You done? Yes, I am. Uh, let's do one of these. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Okay, so... Huzzah. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I began the video, and my both Vimeo was turned down, and it was turned down in the, window, in the Windows mixer, so I did fix that. Sorry, everyone. Uh, cool. All right. And Jeff takes a bow in the chat. Thanks, buddy. Hey, Berserka. Hey. Good to see you. Um... So, so I guess before we get into the into the nitty gritty, do you have any just immediate thoughts? Um, okay. So, uh, actually I actually have a question, uh, and maybe I can see if you respond. The first one uh, is from a game called Clockwork Heart that is in progress, right? But the art is not from that game. Is that correct? Uh, that's. Yeah, I've seen this game. What game is this? Like it says, visuals Breath of Fire, right? Oh, Breath of Fire! It just says right there. <laughs> yeah, Breath of Fire. I can't. You know, it's very clear what it is, you know. Uh, but it's like, uh, yeah, okay, so cool. Um, I would love to see what that. That it's a cool track. It's a cool track. I see why you why, why you wanted to to feature it. Um, uh, it is. It's a little weird, like starting off with something that isn't the actual art from the game, where everything else is the art from the game and shows real well. <laughs> Yeah. So maybe 
I don't know. I almost want I almost want there to be something else before this to like to like branches in because you've got some nice like you have a nice array of stuff. Like it's very retro until we get to baby hands. And I really like like all the the marimba baby hands music. It's it's very nice. Um, um, I don't know if I would shuffle them around or whatnot, but it's weird to start off with just just the uh, the visuals from a different game. Yeah, sure. Uh, you but that's getting, just... it's an interesting interesting thing is with it's it's effectively a rescore at that point. You know, you're yeah. That, that's kind of the the gist, but I get it because it's music from something you're working on. So you're you're trying yeah. to, if I understand correctly, you're trying to be like, hey, I'm doing stuff right now, and this is one of the things and the cool thing I'm doing, one of the tracks and this cool thing I'm working on, but you can't show the game, so it's like, so here's something else. It's it's a little bit, it's a little bit weird. See you, Robbie. Thanks for hanging out, man. See you around. Uh, it's a little bit weird, and I feel like take care, Robbie. I feel like you better. I feel like you'd be better off just saying it's a rescore. Because, like, and until you can say it's from this game, like, it's an ongoing project that you can't show, so that the fact that you can't show it and it's ongoing and no one knows, no one knows what it is, it's not really yeah, even helping if, your case. It is it it is Clockwork Heart, so it has a name, and the name is apparently good enough. Like, you can talk about that much. So I don't know, maybe, like, even if it was, like, even if it was, like, a montage of, like, working like like concept art from it that might be something to show yeah. off if all you're showing off is music but then you're not showing a game in motion so i don't know um yeah what it, what it comes I'm down about... to you is that it's a little i i agree with john it's it's a little bit weird to have your very first thing like again this is your first impression right so you have we'll say you have like 15 seconds gen, like generously to rope someone in and be like hey keep listening it's, it's actually good right uh in this first 15 seconds, it's like track, forest region, final boss, and then unofficial title. Like it's I like does that even matter? I would, yeah, I would, I would switch this. So yeah, I don't, I don't think it matters. I think you don't even say that it's the unofficial title. Uh, yep. I think just let's say it like forest region, final boss is fine. Don't worry about unofficial title. It's a qualifier that's unnecessary. Yeah, no one's uh, hiring you for your good. your track titles. You know, it doesn't matter it's what it's called. <laughs> it's like. Yeah. yeah, in fact, you don't even have to say what it is. Don't even say the track. Just be like, this is Negative World. This is Clockwork Heart, you know, yep. like music from. Uh, I would, so if these are the choice, like if I was to represent these, like I think the combination of like visuals and whatnot, and maybe this is something about the calming aesthetic of your site and everything else, I would start with Baby Hands. Like the music is good. Mm -hmm. It's soothing and nice. I would go from baby hands to like negative world and then whatever, you know, I, and then like, uh, I, I don't know, like Orizom trail is, is, is neat. It's a weirdly like, it sounds dumb, but it's like, it is, it is like a, a, a kind of downbeat kind of depressing sounding thing, which is appropriate for the game, but it's a weird note to go out on like from a from from a like a, a trackless kind of way of putting mm -hmm, it, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. So it's like leaves me with a kind of like a down feeling at the end when I want to be psyched up to be like, oh yeah, cool. Yeah, it's kind of talking stuff. about uh, the flow of the thing, right? I mean, flow in general. Your, your job as a composer is to is to help help kind of sell the story and 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 bring people on that journey of whatever the game is. And with this one, if I the, could just the full flow is kind of. Uh, yeah, I agree. Kind of if I could shuffle beard. these, I would I would put baby, and then I would put negative, and then I would put clockwork cart with different art, because we've seen that you can score to other art, and you don't have to steal like not steal, but you don't have to borrow art from another game, mm -hmm. uh, if it's possible to do something. Or, or sorry, sorry, I would do I would sorry I would do baby, I would do negative, I would do, uh, orzom trails. And then I would end with clockwork, clockwork heart. Even if you don't have, if all you have to is, all you have to work with is, uh, is concept art or titles or something like that, because it's it's exciting uh, and it's retro. Yeah, uh, kind it's, of it feels very. We'll, we'll go into uh, we'll go into presentation here. It's not like we're kind of we'll get on on the rails somewhat as far as getting through the criteria. So again, just to remind yeah. you, we're in presentation, material selection, content quality, and distinction. So first off, presentation. I do want to mention just some real quick stuff before we even talk about the flow of the... Where'd my progress bar go? There it is. 
uh, the very first thing is that your first frame of this video starts just immediately um, with no sense of who this is. You you are so bad at saying your name, Jeff. <laughs> like, the, there's no Jeff on the main page except when said by somebody else, said by Peter. And then we've got no Jeff in the video, dude. Say your dang name. Um, yeah, give us the title card. Yeah, it's at, right at, the, at the end. You do it here at the end. Uh, it's a bit it's a bit rough to look at, but it's it's here. Your name's here at least. Um, but for the name to be here, you need to trust that they watch through this for a minute and a half plus. You know, it's a bit challenging. Hey, Joey, good to see you. Um, okay, so titling wise, just titles. Uh, we'll get to flow in a second. So titles, I mentioned really quick that no one. Uh, no one's going to be that worried about the, the names of your tracks. It's not really that relevant to the hiring process. I think just having having visuals that are supported by appropriate and kick-ass music is kind of the primary concern, right? This being track Forest Region Final Boss, it's not even the name of this track. Like It's an unofficial title. So this is effectively telling us nothing in this track. Um, and then we've got... The second one, Negative World, the track's called World One, so it's not really bringing much to the table there either, right? It's just like, it's typical kind of game track name. <laughs> you know, it's very common. Menu music. Uh, we've got track Living Like a Baby. Again, this doesn't really matter. And then we've got Monster Trek. So I didn't recall any of those after watching that video. It just wasn't really an important information for me, so I didn't, I didn't internalize it. So... Just don't need it. Uh, yep. And then, so going to the next stuff, we've got Game Clockwork Heart Ongoing Project. That's great to know that. Um, you don't need to put the word game there um, because it's it's a game music reel, so we're going to assume it's a game. You know, it's just, it's just redundant. Uh, and the visuals we've been over, if you, if you must use this visuals, I would just call it Breath of Fire and call it a rescore. I think it's much cleaner. Yeah. And they're and they're going to be judging if it is a if it's like an appropriate match to the visuals or not. Like that's because that's the whole thing. You're, you're selling your your gaming sensibilities and saying, hey, if this is a game I'm working on, it's going to sound like this. That's 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 awesome, right? So a rescore is going to be it's going to sell it just fine. And if you do it in the order that uh, John suggested, have it at the end, then you have your shipped stuff up front. And then it's like, oh, and by the way, a little bonus for you here. Here's a rescore of some other track. And it's again not really relevant. It's an ongoing project because. We can't see it, like unless we can see it, like John was saying. Unless we can see it, it just it's kind of confusing and strange to to present like this. Uh, yo, Oscar, been a while, man. How you going? Uh, and then the I'll go to the one that is your game though. So negative world, uh, game negative world visuals negative world. Like I, I sure hope so. You know, um, <laughs> it's like ship title, a, a more a a, a more clever and maybe cleaner way of saying shipped title like this is a lot of text to look at if you just have like yeah. get rid of game get rid of visuals we're going to assume it's from the game um get rid of ship title instead say what platforms it shipped on so say like pc or xbox one yeah. or, or whatever right and that's going to tell people like this thing shipped it's just going to be very yeah. obvious to see and this looks better than like this thing this is shipped title is kind of just a strange thing to put in your reel um, yeah, and especially when they're all shipped titles except for the one that's not done. Yeah. Like, it's, every single one of them is game, Orizom Trails, shipped title, visuals, Orizom Trails, and then the game dev's name, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then... Uh, it's just... It, it's... Department of Redundancy. And then you have uh, the date here. John said earlier he doesn't date anything. I kind of... I'm inclined to agree with him on that note that it's not... It doesn't really help anything, so I just leave it out entirely. It's up to you, though. It's your call. Uh... Yeah, and then we've got, next one, we've got baby hands, baby hands. Same notes, same notes, all the same notes. Just refine it back a bit, you know? And then the last thing, Orzon Trails, same notes. 2013, right? Like, 2013, having this here, and then another one says 2018, 2018, that makes me think, like, what have you been doing for five years? And that's not necessarily a bad thing to wonder, but it's like, Again, this doesn't help you because all that matters to to you right now, like in the now, is being hired for a new gig. That's why you have this reel, right? So 
if you're looking to sell yourself, just say, look at these things I've done. Aren't they awesome? And that's good enough. You don't need to be like, I did this one five years ago and this one six years ago and I did this one last year because it just doesn't, it doesn't add any new information to help your objective of being, of being hired, you know? If that track from Orsum Trails is something you're really proud of, then hell yeah, include it. But it just doesn't really matter. Like, I did some stuff in 2010. I think it really it holds up totally. But I don't need to tell someone that was nine years old, you know? Uh, and last thought is that titling being up here in the corner is pretty crazy. I would definitely recommend being in lower thirds. It's just kind of industry standard across all media, like television and everything. Having it right here is a good spot. It's called a lower third. It's in the bottom third of the um, of the video pane. And then I said you have that this title, um, this this splash up front, uh, and yeah, I think that I do like that you're you're pulling in your. I mean, we've talked to, to you about this before too, but you're using the um, the background icon and using it kind of here also. I think that your icon looks better framed kind of when it's inside of something else and not just huge, uh, like the full the full height. I don't think it's helping you. Just having it in the middle, like boom, right here with your name and information beneath it tastefully would be really nice. Um, and the same thing in the front too to make sure that people know what they're listening to. Uh, I think that does it for my notes. Do you have any notes there, John? Sort of dominate the conversation there for a second. <laughs> um, no, 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 it's okay. I was like, ah, do I jump in? Uh, but I, I pretty much agree with everything. Like, I think, I think, like, uh, you know, just have the game's name, uh, just the game's name, and like what platforms it, what platforms it shipped on would do the trick. Uh, maybe sh- reshuffle the order. The actual, like, I, I have to admit, like, like listening to listening to the music. Like you actually, your, your stuff is good. I, I do like like some of the nice counterpoint and negative world. Like it's very uh, appropriately like matched to the very retro like two color visuals. Like it works real well. And like uh, the little bit of stuff that we get from Baby Hands is also really nice. And your your Clockwork Heart score is also quite good. It I'm not. I still I, I have to admit like maybe it's also because it's in 2013 and it's old and you've gotten much better since then. Uh, but like Monster Trek, or sorry, Orizom Trails. See there, I did it. Yeah. I'm looking at the thing at the top and thinking yeah. that's a game. Uh, like uh, Orizom Trails, like doesn't hang like uh, compared to the other ones. Like as like you know, it does. Just the 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 instruments don't quite do it for me. But maybe if they're not, it's not quite as good. So like if you if that's what you want to show, then like bearing it would probably be good. Or putting it in the middle somewhere. <laughs> yeah, uh, is good and starting one of the stronger ones. Um. But like it is, uh, it's it's a solid reel. It's like a solid four things. I would love to see something on here that is a bit more like I, a bit more energetic. Like I know that like like the kind of slower driving rock stuff. Like it feels very almost Genesisy uh, with with Clockwork Heart. Like does a bit of that. But I'd almost like to see something that's just like you know full throttle all the way ahead super exciting like maximum action jeff mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um yeah in terms of like material you know, selection i mean what do you what do you so i guess here's a, here's a good question if you have the answer to it what do you think jeff wants to be working on next like what kinds of projects <sighs> well uh what is what it, boy that's a good question actually like because i feel like i feel like judging from the stuff he has worked on in the past it feels like kind of like there's a lot of stuff that feels a little bit more, maybe a little bit more intimate, uh, a, little, a little smaller scale, but that is also because the games are also like small indie things. Mm-hmm. So um, <clears throat> I think my, so my, my thoughts would be that these are quite different projects, right? Like a VR thing. Very. Yeah. yeah. And like this mobile thing and uh, you know, the, the JRPG kind of visuals assume that you think that that would be a good fit for that game. That's also a different kind of like Capcom being a larger developer. Uh, I think this is kind of a I am freelancing and I work on whatever kind of real, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. It's fine that's, to have. That's that. exactly what it feels like. Yeah. <clears throat> um, it's it's a bit. I mean, I'm not. I I've never had to sell myself as a game composer personally, um, like as in Kevin Reggie as a, as a composer. So I'm not entirely sure about like. I mean, perhaps John, you'll have an idea about this, but 
the idea of it's often a, a, a debate I'm sure like whether it's better to to generalize and be good at many things or to like be the guy for this one style and like just just, just nail it every time that someone needs to hire you for that that one thing right so with that's this a, that's a weird it's it's, it's challenging yeah. right it's like well what do you, what do you want to do and this is, I mean, of course negative world is massively different than everything else yeah. that's real right so it's kind of a question I think of actually what is the it? fact that negative world is massively different actually really helps because it's like oh he has he, you, you it shows me that you have like the difference between negative world and baby hands is huge mm -hmm. and both of them are very good uh and therefore like oh you have range like that tells me something right there you know i'm uh, i'm i can't help that i'm less impressed by orizom trails i'm sorry uh but um but like having like like a retro very retro like negative world uh a more recent but still retro clockwork heart track and then like something that could be modern like you know like it, it feels uh, you know, much more, much more recent with, with baby hands. <clears throat> yeah. Like, uh, like that's a nice kind of spread those three things. Yeah. You know, I'd still, I, I would, I would, I would replace monster Trek with something that is more, uh, um, you know, to give a complete spectrum of things, I would replace monster Trek with something that was a bit more, I don't know. I want to say apocalyptic, but that's <laughs> just me. Um, sure. Sure. You know, like I, I know that technically zombie apocalypse is a thing, but like I'm, you know, mid apocalypse, not post apocalypse, you know, uh, but I, that's just that may just be me. Um, it is a real hard question to to answer. Like, what do you uh, how do you market yourself? Like, do you go for just like one thing? When I did gunpoint, like I got hit up for a lot of people, you know, looking for like noir jazz scores. Mm hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. which is like, cool. I had not really done that much in the noir jazz spectrum. I, I love it, but I wrote like like five minutes of music for this game. Yeah, yeah. And now I'm going to do a bunch of stuff. Cool. Sure. Um, um, you know, and so it was like, great, that's a thing. But like since then, I've done so many different projects in with, with so many different hats. And it's like, it's easier to kind of define like the things that I don't generally, like that I don't do. Uh, than it is to define the things that I do do. So, like, I know a lot of people, like, have a specific sound and a certain feel, and, like, I think my feel is more, like, in my own melodic sensibilities and kind of harmonic language rather than, like, the style of the game that it is. And mm -hmm. that's a, it's a harder thing to kind of pin down. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I think, know, that, so I think that versatility is fine as long as your various styles are, like, they're all hanging together, you know? Um, exactly, exactly. If you're so, for example, if I did like if I Kevin Ragmi did like a, a music reel, and I had like some electronic stuff and some symphonic stuff and and like some synth wave things, and I have like a piano ballad, and I've got like this chip tune, you know, crazy thing. If the ballad's like really bad, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. If it's not, if it's just not, or just not as good as everything else, then it's kind of like, well, why am I putting it in my reel? So it's. It's really up to you, Jeff, to be like, uh, are these things all like are they are they all hanging, and are they representative of the of like what I want to be doing moving forward? So if I, if I like want to do a variety of things in these various styles, like if someone hits you up for more chiptune stuff, are you going to be stoked for that, or were you doing this because you had to? It just came into your lap. You're like, I oh, guess I guess I should. It's um, it's really up to you. So if, if I think that you're real, as long as it's kind of true to what you want to be doing then you'll be in, in good shape um but i do agree with john's note from before so i guess we can jump into kind of into a hard like content quality uh position here for the music so in terms of the i know you've kind of given a lot of opinions on um kind of the energy level of things and like the palette and so forth do you have any notes like specifically on like music and if it's kind of if it's if it's knocked out of the park or if you have some notes for improvement or anything like that um well let me kind of go back here and uh take a listen to these again um so um i'm gonna start with like uh start at the beginning why not let's yep, um yep so listen to clockwork heart this is it's like a hard loop clipping 
I'm hearing it on your end. That's why. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry man. My bad. <laughs> Should I mute myself? No, it's okay. <laughs> no, actually, you could just keep it on and I can listen to it over there, too. That works fine. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I'll crank this up then. Yeah, so uh, yeah, crank I it, have... Crank it up and skip back to the beginning again. I have a note. Um, I think that the flute comes in. It's more interesting. Um, but everything else is the same, so I feel like it's wasted time. That you've got like this... Um, and then we hear the same thing again, yeah. and like not much has changed. So we got 15 seconds here, and it's kind of the same thing again. And so I just feel like if if you've got if you have successfully grabbed someone's attention in 15 seconds, they want to hear more, and then the very next thing you play for them is like largely the same as what they just heard. That feels a little bold, but I'll let I'll let John weigh in here. Yeah, no, I, I, um, it's one of these, it's one of these things like when you're, when you're scoring like a game and you need, especially it's a turn-based game, you know, where you don't want it to have like radical changes. Like it makes sense that you'd want to like, oh, we're we'll do the same thing again and decorate it up a little bit more and whatnot. But you might want to make that second or a variation a bit more of a variation. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, you know, just, just the flute stuff, the kind of, um, like parallel, it almost sounds like parallel fifths, uh, but like. The parallel uh, flute parts, like that stuff, is mm -hmm. is neat. But like maybe if there was some other element introduced to further spice it up, uh, maybe if you built up into the second uh, into the second like repeat, so it didn't just feel like a straight repeat with a second. You know, the flute player sees you know second time only. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. You know, otherwise it just doesn't. Uh, it's it's not as <clears throat> interesting. I think yeah, as it could I, be. I, I cannot and then after stress that, the importance of using your time wisely. It's so freaking important, man, to be like, you listen to my stuff's amazing, please. And then they listen to it, and if they like it, oh my god, use that time wisely. Holy. It's just, ugh. It's, it's very, very important. I have strong opinions so on this, this nature. Is, this is maybe a dumb thing here, but like as you <clears> as you get to the end of that bit, when the flute ends, it almost sounds like you're going to some kind of breakdown or a B section or something like that, right? Like, what if you just like, like in the game that may make perfect sense to have it first and then have the flute come in the second time and then go to another bit. Like I've done that. Goodness knows I've done that. Mm -hmm. And that works real well in a game. But like for the real, like what if you start where the flute's already in? Like the melody's strong enough, the flute can do its thing. And then you go to the B section, you give them a bit of the B section and then you go on. Like it, it sounds like there's another thing, another idea right there, right when it fades to negative world, you know? Yeah, and yeah, yeah I agree. And as far as uh, Negative Worlds content, I crank this up again. Mm. Like nice, simple, like contrapuntal bass line. It feels good, and then you got that real neat little running, moving left hand part, or well, yeah, left hand. <laughs> Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm thinking sure. of it as, you know? Yeah, sure. And then again right there, so you've got this kind of it's it's the same format. It's it's here's the ba ba ba. It's very similar as far as like held notes too. The you know the lead instrument is doing its thing, holding it out for a while, and then doing a thing again, holding it out for a while, and then the phrase and then ends, we do it, it repeats. Again, make it more interesting and then the next time then it goes to like a b section but we don't hear the b section because we cut to something new yeah man i want to hear those b sections just move all your tracks over by like one phrase and yeah maybe yeah. like i think it's maybe less egregious with negative world because yeah, I agree. fully i like negative world like it's more it's funny because it's simpler but it's more interesting to me mm -hmm. maybe it's just because it is so much more clear than uh like the clockwork heart uh uh you know maybe it's just those I don't know. I almost want to say like Commodore 64 sounds or something like that, but maybe that's not really the right the right uh, language. I didn't grow up. so so spoilers. Uh, I didn't grow up playing consoles of any sort. I grew up <coughs> with PC, and so I had like MIDI and Sound Blaster and AdLib cards and oh, yeah. IRQ settings yeah, to yeah. fight. So I didn't grow up with this stuff. So when I use like language like uh, like it sounds like it came out of a Genesis. This is like secondhand information. Um, uh, but um, well, how about this? But uh, this is uh, how, how about this next section here with the um, with the baby hands? You like that one, right? Go for it. I yeah, did. Yeah, I go. did. It's very simple, but like your baby, you know. Yeah, I was definitely pulled in the most with this one.
of all the tracks. Yeah, it's 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 entrancing. Like, like I almost wanted to like introduce another instrument besides the marimba, but then again, if it was a sampled instrument and it didn't hang with the marimba sample, like marimba samples are nice, and like the one you have there sounds really good. You know, so I, I actually I've really no complaints about the music in that section. And that slice of music is really lovely. Yeah, it's cool. <clears throat> um, I think you should start with that. I mean, we, we've been through the flow thing already, so no need to re- reiterate. And the Orazon Trails, I know you weren't a fan. We'll have a quick listen here as well. But yeah, go for it. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely sounds like it hasn't aged well. But you made this track a long time ago. It shipped. It's cool. But it's it's cool that it's shipped and it shows you're working on stuff. I know you said that before before in the past. It's important to hit home. Like I'm doing it. I'm I'm in the I'm in the industry. But the fact that you've dated it and the fact that it's not quite as good as your more, more recent stuff is a uh, it's a hard sell. So um, I don't think we need to get into that too much because a lot of the problems that, to fix there are fixed in your new music. So you've already obviously matured in that way. Um, John, if you don't mind, I want to hop in these other reels really fast here too. I know that Jeff absolutely. Is, that. is absolutely a composer first and foremost. So I wanted to spend most time with that. I mean, of course, you're, the, you're a composer also, John, so I didn't want to waste too much time with sound design things, but I do want to glance at this. So let's have a have a look. Make sure my, sound my, my everything's turned up. Again, it just slams into it. Where's your title card, man? Uh, cranking audio and go. <laughs> Okay, so dead eye baby here. I <laughs> oh, I didn't mute myself again. Sorry. Uh, so one thing about real talk is, will if if I weren't streaming, and if I watched a given reel, and if I would behave differently, if like alone like in my with my laptop or something, such as closing the window or such as skipping ahead, then I'll let you know. We'll watch the whole thing for real talk, but I'll let you know. I would have stopped. About four seconds ago, I think, or at least started skipping through. Watch the whole thing, but I, you've lost me. So we'll keep going. We'll come back and talk about why. Okay. Okay. All right. I have a lot of notes. So <laughs> let's, um, he, here's the thing, Jeff. It's really common for composers to like have a sound design reel. Um, and it's, it's really frequent that the sound design is not at the same level of maturity and just skill, like skill level that the music is. And that's absolutely where we're at right now. So I'm curious, like you're in the chat, I'm curious if this is something you want to be doing or if it's something you feel you have to do because that's often a, a, a mindset people have. Like, oh, I need to put sounds on here because the, these indie devs, these mobile devs will need to hire someone like that has dual skills, right? Like both music and sound. I'm curious kind of what you're, what you're, you, where, you, where you see yourself in five years kind of thing, right? Uh, ending on no might not be the best idea. That, <laughs> that was one of my notes, Tuckable. Named it. Hey, Elspeth, good to see you. No. Uh, yeah, so, oh, geez. Um, there is no ambience in this video. And as such, the various sounds are really disconnected. Um, I'll, I'll, I'm just going to slam through the, the criteria, if you don't mind here, John. So... Okay. Presentation, material selection, content quality, and distinction. We'll just slam through here. So, presentation-wise, I mean, same notes for the, uh, for the. I mean, you, you, know, you have visuals, but not game. I guess there's no, there's no track playing. That's why your titles are different. But yeah, same notes for all the titling. Put your book in on front and back. Uh, this bookend was kind of crazy with the sound. 
Um, I understand it's better to have nothing or better have something than nothing, but I think that that something needs to make a little, little more sense. It's just like a loud single note. Yeah, what note. is that? Just a what single chord. That? It's a little strange. Um, it sounds like <clears throat> like the organ from like the church rectory that is breaks when you turn it on. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, here's Jeff in the chat here saying, I feel like it's a have to do in order to find work. Yeah, that's a very I, common, I totally get that. It's a very common perspective. Uh you do enjoy doing Foley, though, recording original sounds. Oh, sure. Yeah, did you record that VCR? That's cool VCR. Um, so, okay, again, just going to keep going through the criteria. So, presentation-wise, there are two things in this reel, and it is longer than it should be for two things. Uh, the fact that it's only two things calls out that you don't do sound design very often, and the fact that it's not quite in the same level as music. I'm not sure it's helping you as far as I had to do thing. So, and I, I think there's plenty, like I know a lot of game composers that only do music and they work with teams like, or like they have a sound designer doing the sound part. Uh, it's really common for us to come on a project and, you know, like Austin's doing music or Danny's doing music or whatever, right? And yeah, I, th I think that this sound design is not at a level that is going to help you find work more. Um, and also, so in terms of this 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 uh, second half here, it is I keep losing my play progress bar on this window, man. Is it because of the widget or something? I, it is the widget. It's a little bit, bit weird. I don't know. Uh, so I'm gonna turn it down a bit. So okay, it's only two things, and flow wise, it falls pretty flat. The baby hands does show a bunch of different things you did. That's cool, and it does imply that you recorded some things. It's pretty cool too. The Second half, though, is like largely the mm. same five seconds over and over again. So it's not really bringing new information. It's kind of the same note as that first track in your music reel and that you're using these 15 seconds. Sounds great. And the next 15 are kind of the same. So it's it, it's a bit like dis, discourteous to your listeners because they're like, okay, cool. Show me all your, all your awesome stuff. And then you turn this video on and it's like the same thing for a while. Uh, in this case, like we hear the bling, bling, bling and a rock rumble, bling. And then, like, that's, we're now informed. Like, that's all there is, right? And then the no at the very end is kind of unfortunate. <laughs> um, no. It's, uh, no. I mean, yeah, it's like a very low mix level and stuff, but it's also just saying no at the end of your reel, just kind of from a psychological standpoint, is <laughs> maybe not the best best choice. To be like, a, yeah, that was awesome. Um, Except instead. for the fact that it's the person getting yeah, hit with hopefully a rock. You, yeah, hopefully they've won no. the game. They say, "Yeah, that's awesome." Uh, yeah. So quality-wise, just some like sound design tips. If you do want to keep going with sound design, um, then I think you have some really cool stuff here, like the little footfalls and, or handfalls, I guess, for the baby crawling are really nice. The there are some cool sounds here that that work well, but the absence of ambience means they don't really they don't live in the same world. They're they're kind of separate. Also, the quality, like the actual sound quality, uh, like the recording quality of some sounds is, is quite different. There's one here that had like a massive noise floor. I think it was one of the baby cries. Like those are pretty clean sounds. And like that there, uh, 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 you can hear the it noise sounds floor. Sounds like a, like a like a, a doll that is they like, got a recording yeah. of a chip inside it. And like I know, you know that it's tough to find good baby noises. I don't I don't envy you, dude. But like, it's. It's just unfortunate that this this recording quality is obviously a lower quality than everything else in the sound. So you, it doesn't sound like it's from the same game, right? It sounds like it's uh, from elsewhere. That's an actual baby. Yes, I I, I thought it was an actual baby, um, but the oh yeah, it also moves in this spectrum, like in the panorama. Um, but see, this is back the the shooting for a while. You shoot these things for way too long. Like we, yeah, we, there's two sounds. It's like the the shot and the hit, and that's really all we need to hear. Just that, and then move on kind of thing like keep the flow going right and again the flow is really it's a big part of your job so if you are able to make a video that grips people and they watch the whole thing through because it just has an awesome flow to it that's gonna kind of convince people in a certain subconscious way because that implies you understand flow and you're gonna write stuff that has a good flow to it too right uh we'll keep going here oh this sound was crazy the Oh, but I'll turn it back up to full, full volume for mixing reasons. In general, this is a pretty loud reel. It's, 
it's pretty loud, and the, the the baby noises are quite loud too. That's why that uh, that noise floor is so audible because everything's so loud. Like, that's a good mix level there. I like that one. So like that VCR sounds really contoured and accurate to what the VCR would sound like. It's a really good recording. That's what I mean. Like this, this is a great recording. It sounds very good. And then the footfalls and stuff are kind of like a little more lo-fi and different. They're not quite so, they're not quite so realistic. So overall, it feels like the the direction on the audio is kind of loose. So it's not like we're stylizing it, or it's like all gamey, or it is all like hyper realistic. I think that some more focus would really help bring everything together into the same space. And like focus in includes things like recording quality. It includes things like style. Uh, it includes things like, I mean, if you want to get even deeper, like tonality, like things like pitch or band, or if they're like based in a certain key center. There's a lot of things you need to consider for, for audio direction. And it just feels very loose. Um, and this one, like, it's fine. Like for mobile mobile sound games, or maybe mobile game sound, like the bling, bling, bling. That's very common. That's a good good little sound. The ascending pitch thing shows your, you understand the concept of like sound over time. It's cool. It's just way too long. Like it's way too long for what it is. So it's um, yeah. And the, the cartoon laser. Yeah, I, I did mention it was pretty pretty crazy loud. Uh, this guy here. And it's just it's a little. It's pretty abrasive for what it is. But I don't know. I mean, it's shipped though, right? So that's that's another thing, thing to consider here. Is this game shipped? So someone who who made the choices, made the made the calls, uh, said, "Yep, great, let's go, thank you," and you shipped a game. So good on you. <laughs> it still worked out. So I'm happy to get my feedback on the game that shipped. But bottom line, you made some stuff, and people, uh, you know, they said, "Great, thank you, good." Um, let's watch the implementation really quick here. It's 30 seconds long. We got like five minutes left here, John. Thanks a lot, pal. All right. Let's do this. Let's uh, hang in a second. Let me get it queued up. Yeah, sure. And I'll. All right. I'll shoot me myself. And then crank it. Three, two, one, play. I'm broke. I should get more gyms first. I can't afford this yet. Uh, that was in mono. You hear that? <laughs> it's just the ending. Was it? Yeah, it was in mono. Yeah. Dude. I flipped my mono switch to double check, and it totally didn't change. Uh, okay, so one... I We don't need to put, put a lot of time into this. Um, one thing about videos like this, Jeff, is they're a lot more engaging if you're explaining it. Like, if you're the one... And again, I'll just open that page that was already open earlier. Freaking um, iGame Audio. Let's just pull up Damien Shepard... The legend, and let's go into his. I don't know, this video probably will work. Hello, my name is Damien Shepard, and I do sound design, music, and implementation for video games. And you sound great doing it. Um, this, this video is a great example. Like, immediately, clear voice, speaking confidently. I'm like, I trust you, Damien, immediately. That presentation compared to this presentation where it's like this just kind of box with the text on it is like he's blowing you out of the water, man, you know? So this approach is just not very effective. It's cool to show how things work. I like that a lot. And people take a shot, everyone. Thanks, Pierre. It's, it's cool to show these kind of things. They are interesting. People like seeing it. But it's just not very effective when you have a bunch of text to read. Because I have this thing up here, I've got, um, I also read this sentence like four times before I understood what it said. When the player clicks on an item they can purchase when they don't have enough gems. When the, even now, when the player clicks on an item they can purchase when they don't have enough gems. So they can't purchase it. Yeah, well, they can't, <laughs> yeah, yeah. When this the, is, when the really player confusing. doesn't have enough gems to buy an item, Unity calls, that's all you need. Right, okay, I understand. Right? Thank you, John. Um, so Unity calls this thing. So, yeah, it's, you're definitely better off 
writing or just saying it, being like, hey, this is Jeff McMillan, and here's uh, Muddy Mountain. Strap in. Let's go. That's going to be like walk way through it. Like, like, because yeah, I'm, I'm, I didn't even, I'll be honest. I tried to read this sentence and then I just stopped reading. And it's, uh, it's maybe a little mean because I know this, these things take time to like make this video and no, get, no. <laughs> so this, Windows is like, hey man, want to update? No, I don't want to update right now. Windows, calm down. Um, I stopped reading because I was watching this also. So if you're talking over it, it's like way more effective to just have you like telling us what's happening rather than making us read it while there's things up here happening at the same time, you know? So <sighs> weird question here. And the second half of this, is it, it says, so when the player starts on level one, Unity calls the let, set level, you know, one or set level two, which sets the level BGM, you know, the level BGM switch container to level two. Is it literally the same music every time, just being pitch shifted up? Uh, Is that what I'm understanding here? I'm not sure. I don't know. Because it's ascending all the time. It's making me very like unsure about that yeah so because like, it sounds exactly the same every time what this comes down to jeff is that you've made this video to tell us how the thing works and we're not clear how it works and i think it'd be a lot clearer if you were to like explain it you know if you just walk through and, and like say what's going on because then our attention is more focused and it's not trying to like watch the things what's happening in a game and like read the text at the same time and stuff it's just not very it's it's a bit of a of a scattered focus kind of problem going on so uh i guess we can probably wrap it there dude so we'll just go do a quick kind of overview of the criteria so presentation um put your dang name man <laughs> put it all over definitely yeah. just plaster your name all over this stuff make sure people know who you are uh, i'm okay with this being your front page saying like demo reels it's okay um but i think your name should be here somewhere as a, as a to, to imply this is the front page the on the videos again like all the titling could use some work the lower lower thirds and um refining the text so it's like less text and less redundancy and the flow being pretty important think about the uh the order of, of of content and such the as far as material selection it's pretty clear you're working on a variety of things and if you want to work on a variety of things then great it's doing its job the content quality we mentioned getting rid of that one track or some trails or perhaps yeah i mean it's maybe you find something else that's more recent that's kind of more indicative of your your current maturity in writing because i think it's just a bit it's a bit aged uh, and I think John thought that as well. And sound design wise, I mean, yeah, it's it's, it's not standing up quite yet. If you, I don't think that you need to have it there. Honestly, I think I think you can double down on music. And uh, I mean, this is my perspective. I don't think that you need to have it there. And if you have it there and you don't like doing it, then you'll be in this position where you're like doing something you don't want to, and and you're selling yourself on that. Like it's never going to stand up if you don't like doing it, right? Uh, and implementation just yeah i mean the, the music stuff's cool like showing how things work is awesome just i think telling us is going to be a better approach also like it's it's you work in audio you know um and if you feel like awkward in the mic i mean do you just you do speaking events and stuff you can talk <laughs> no problem so let's hear your lovely voice in the mic man all right um do you have any final thoughts here man before we jump into distinction sean um i honestly like i think you pretty much hit uh, all the uh, all the points that I had, uh, there's one is <laughs> the dumbest thing. Uh, my 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 OCD has tripped, uh, and when you state on your front page, timestamps are in brackets. You have capitalized the T and the I, so it's ta. I'm oh, I didn't catch that. Yo, that's my job usually is to the, catch that stuff. Sorry, it's the dumbest <laughs> dumbest observation. No man, uh, apart from true. that, basically, it's it's just everything we've already said. Like. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, carry on. Let's. Uh, let's uh, yeah. Let's so distinction wise, um, do you do you think that Jeff is standing out in a in a crowd right now, John? Um, I think I think unfortunately no. Uh, I think it, it there is a definite path to that. Like I like some of the stuff on the site is very elegant. Uh, there's some niceness here. Uh, a lot of the, you know, the music that you've actually that you've written, like for the most part, I like a lot of it. I like a lot of it for the specific things that you're doing. I just think it could be just shared a bit, you know, displayed a bit more uh, elegantly, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, and like uh, spice it up a bit more with uh, 
you know, maybe lose, you know, lose that one track and, and, uh, and, and go from there. You know, it's, it's really, it's just a lot of like little presentation stuff. Yeah, it is. You know? It's a lot of those like, small things everywhere. Uh, but I mean, I will say, Jeff, this is a, this is a massive improvement over the last time I saw your stuff. So good on you. You're clearly like, like John mentioned, you have, there's a, the path is there, you know, the path is clear. Um, so I think you should keep at it and it's, yeah, it's really up to you to decide what you want to convey to your viewers and listeners on your, your site visitors, what you want to convey it is that you are best at and what you want to do. So I think that's going to be, you know, when you're happiest and when you're doing your best work. So, uh, thanks a lot, pal. Claps for Jeff McMillan. Good to see you again, buddy. And I hope I see you again at some, some show soon. Uh, and claps for John Robert Matz. Aw, shit. Thanks. Holy. What a guy. Again, um, I want to stress that John totally got us out of a jam. Adam had to reschedule last minute, unfortunately. And John was like, heck yeah. Where do I sign? And jumped on board. So <laughs> um, thanks a lot, pal. Uh, do you have anything you want to push right now? Like stuff coming out, things to watch for? Oh, man. Okay, sure. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, so um, right now, uh, like I said, I've got a, a couple talks at GDC. So if anyone's planning on going to GDC and we'll be doing like the audio track or uh, or all access or whatever, come see those. Uh, they should be neat. I'm doing a boot camp on Tuesday where I'm talking about interactive uh, music implementation uh, and design uh, for scores. Yeah. Um, I've got that uh, that talk about uh, how how, uh, how I learned to stop worrying and embrace imperfection. Uh, I'm I'm also uh, on a Weird, interesting uh, micro talks thing uh, with uh, Emmanuel Lagumbe uh, talking about um, communication uh, as a composer, like working with the rest of the team and working with your sound designer partners uh, and making sure that everyone is on the same page and not stepping on toes and uh, working as a unit, especially when you're not in the same building mm-hmm. as them. Uh, so that'll be interesting. And that's like the shortest thing in the world because it's part of a longer thing called Trumpets and Transients, uh, which is a very on a talk that we did at, mm, let's see, at uh, GameSoundCon the last couple of years. And you're and busy, that's been, holy. that's been over for a while. I can't, like, so, uh, one, one talk at GDC is so, yeah. <laughs> like, it stresses me out so much, I can't imagine having, like, multiple. It just... I believe me, this is not my. <laughs> this is one of these fun like, things where you, it's like, what are you doing? Uh, where I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, this would be great. I'll, I'll push. I'll submit this, and then like, uh, Emmanuel's like, I'm gonna submit the thing that we did at GameSoundCon. I'm like, sure, go for it. I'm like, surely, surely these won't all happen. That's never happened in the history of. Oh no, they all happened. What mm. have I done? Yeah. Uh, so it'll be great. It'll be fun stuff. Uh, outside of that, uh, I launched a game called For the King earlier this year, uh, which is a, a nifty uh, turn-based uh, roguelike tabletop game uh, with a team actually up there in Vancouver, Iron Oak Games. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's super cool, and it's been doing like quietly really well on Steam, which is nice. Uh, it's a fun score, uh, fairly exciting, like uh, wise implementation. I'll probably be walking through a little bit of that at GDC uh, during the, the boot camp section, so that should be fun. Um, uh, outside of that, I'm working on a game called uh, uh, Ambition, a Minuet in Power, which is a a roguelike dating sim sent, set on the eve of the French Revolution in Paris. Okay. Uh, uh, and you you play a young woman who has traveled to uh, uh, traveled to Paris uh, to meet her fiance, uh, who she finds out has fled the country. Uh, and you uh, instead of leaving as he urges you to, you decide to uh like work your way up the social ladder and uh commission gowns and go to fancy parties and win people over and get blackmail uh and uh and manipulate and work your way to the top of the Paris power structure before the revolution breaks out and then uh depending on how things turn out you you could either ascend uh to uh to the heights or or your or your head may roll mm-hmm. uh and it should be very interesting and the score is all very um uh, very period. Uh, I, I've been kind of digging into my music history background and doing like string quartets and uh, and uh, basically you know movements from symphonies and uh, you know piano trios and all kinds of fun stuff. Well, it it's, sounds uh, killer, it's man. Super, I, I feel like you really got to do it. You know, I mean. So I, I have one last parting question for you. How much brass is too much brass? 
there's no such thing as too much brass. <laughs> That's the only answer. Okay, um, I think that might be your answer. Um, thank, thanks a lot, man. <laughs> thanks for joining uh, you're, us. You're most welcome. It was a killer um, time. Hope you had, one, can hope I throw fun. one last one last plug out there real quick? Before oh heck we go? yeah, go for it. So uh, my current my current nightmare endeavor is that I am co-writing uh, with my good friend Jeff Swingle, uh, a an absurd thing. Uh, it is called Esper, a Final Fantasy VI musical. This is only tangentially related to video game audio because it is a lot of video game people and it's based on a video game. Mm -hmm. We are doing a, a uh, an unofficial licensed adaptation in in basically audio theater of the mind form uh, of the story of Final Fantasy VI with amazing amazing cast uh of voice actors and singers and it's gonna be absurd um we're kickstarting that in a month it should be neat fingers crossed fingers uh, crossed but nice. it's, it is it is crazy if you like musical theater check it out Killer. Musical.com. anyway thank you very much for having musical. me com. of course john thanks a lot pal uh i'm gonna let everyone go right now i'll i'll, I'll, just, uh, I'll just hang up here okay <laughs> thanks a lot man All right later take care bye one more Round of applause for John Herbert Banks. Thanks, pal. That was killer. It was great to have you on the, on the show. Um, okay, as far as Real Talk goes, if anyone in the chat wants to submit to Real Talk, feel free to do so. Just at Power Up Audio. I know we actually had someone just submit, like, before we went live. I saw it there. There was a, a little notification from somebody saying, um, hey, you please, can, get, can we have a thing? And I said, heck yeah, let's go. Um, there he is, Billy Often William Palmer. Submit my game, Audio Dumb Real. I can't wait to see this. So we're going to have some more guest hosts in the future. I'm lining up next week right now, and I hope I will see you next week. All right, let's get Luck Hash going again, too. Holy crap, that song was good. <laughs> that song is so good, man. Um, Plus back a bit, and Doomsday. That's a good track. Can you play this, please? Please, though, please? Oh, I can't... Oh, my goodness. Fine. All right. Well, there it is. Nice. Okay. Oh, this is so good, this tune. Luck hash, man. Luck hash. Thanks a lot. Peace. Take off.